Hey, chemists, it's Ms. Boito and Ms. Lowerman here. We are bringing you your notes at home via a uh, video podcast for you to watch and follow along with and take notes. Yeah, we figured out that uh, you guys can take notes at home and then do the really hard stuff like solving problems and things while you're in school when we're actually here to help you. All right, so here's how this is going to work. So just like in class, uh, you need to have your notebook out. You need to be writing down everything that's underlined. And you want to try and watch this whole video in one sitting. But unlike in class, uh, you can pause us. Uh, if you need to go back and hear something again, you can stop it, rewind, watch the whole thing again. If you want to have a snack, you go have a snack. Feel free to eat. You come back, you pick up where you left off. All right. But if you need to go back or hear something again, you can definitely do that. Um, so at the end of this video, uh, there's going to be a slide that comes up that's going to ask you to write down basically what you understood about what the video told you, and then also a couple of questions that you have. All right, we're going to be checking in with you tomorrow to make sure that you figured out what the video was about and has have some questions about what you watched. Awesome. So uh, Ms. Lowerman and I are super excited about our scuba diving trip to Belize. Um, and as you know already, it's your job to help us figure out if we can bring our standard scuba diving equipment or if we need to bring some special stuff because we're diving so deep into the, is the blue hole. The blue hole. Into the blue hole. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. So in order for you guys to figure that out, there are some other things about gases that you need to know in order to give us some good advice so we don't end up staying forever in the blue hole. We'd like to come home. So pay attention to uh, this stuff about the properties of gases. It's underlined. Copy it down into your notebook. It's your title. Uh, so you can give us some advice about which scuba diving equipment to bring. Awesome. All right, so here's a, the first thing that you should know about gases. They're compressible, so gas particles are so far apart that you can squish them together into a smaller space. So you might want to hit pause here to finish copying this down, because we're moving right along. So gases are also expandable, which means they fill up any container you put them in. Okay, so you guys might remember compressible and expandable from when you guys were out in the parking lot um, being gas particles. Uh, you filled up your whole container, so you, you all moved around inside the whole container, but then when we shrunk the volume of the container down, you were able to shrink and get closer together. All right? And that's just how gas particles act in real life. And one more thing about gas particles. You know from the beginning of the year that gas particles uh, are always in motion, uh, any matter actually, gas part the particles are always in motion. This is the kinetic theory. So when you were out in the parking lot, uh, you never stopped moving. You kept walking and you pinged off the, the outside and you kept moving in a different direction. So gas particles are always in constant motion. And you guys did an absolutely fantastic job pulling this information together yesterday. So you guys noticed that when the heat increased, the particles moved faster, which made them bounce into each other more and made the pressure in the container increase. All right. You also noticed that when there were more particles, um, when more of you guys were inside the balloon, you collided into each other more, uh, and the pressure went up. All right. Also, when we made the container smaller, when we decreased the volume of the container, more people were banging into each other, and that made the pressure go up. All right. Just, just like imagine a whole bunch of people in a nightclub. Right? If you close the volume down to make it smaller, people are going to bang into each other more, right? and the pressure is going to go up. Great. So there are four variables that we're going to study that affect what's going on with the gas. So here they are. There is temperature. So how much kinetic energy does the gas have? If it's really hot, the particles are going to be moving faster, higher kinetic energy. If it's really cold, the particles are going to be moving slower with less kinetic energy. Another variable is pressure. So how much force is squeezing on that gas? Uh, volume also affects a gas. So how much space does the gas take up? How much space does it have to take up? How big is the container? And finally, number of moles. So when we're outside, we put more gas particles, so more of you are in the balloon. Uh, that's more moles of gas. Uh, so how many atoms or molecules of gas are there in this container? So we're going to look at uh, temperature, pressure, and volume for the rest of this video to figure out what units these three things need to be in to be successful in uh, doing some gas calculations later on. All right, so um, so you're going to get yourself all screwed up if you use the wrong units. 
Um, and sometimes we're going to be tricky and we're going to give you problems that don't necessarily have the exact units you need to use. So it's really important that you be careful about what units you're using. Okay, so pressure, which we always represent in chemistry with a big capital P, that has to be in atmospheres, which is represented by the abbreviation ATM. Okay, and you have experienced atmospheres before, um, because right now, wherever you're sitting, you are under one atmosphere of pressure, just from the atmosphere, the weight of the gas uh, above us, pushing down on us right now. Okay, so you're currently under one atmosphere of pressure. Nice. Uh, here's a, another variable with another unit that you're familiar with. You're used to using volume in liters. There are a lot of cases in chemistry where your, your volume has to be in liters. You know you can't use milliliters. So just a reminder that a thousand milliliters is equal to a liter. Uh, so here are a couple examples. Uh, in the first one, uh, maybe the problem gives you 450 milliliters. You know that you can't use 450 milliliters. So we're going to convert it by writing down a fraction. We're going to put a thousand milliliters on the bottom so that it cancels out. One liter goes on the top because that's the unit that we want at the end. We're going to do 450 divided by 1,000 to get 0 0.450 liters. So you know this, that's just a reminder. You can go the other way around. So maybe the problem asks you in the end to express your answer in milliliters. Uh, 2.5 liters, for example, we're gonna convert that back to milliliters by multiplying by 1,000 milliliters over one liter. Liters cancels out because it's on the top and the bottom. We multiply and you get 2,500 milliliters. All right, so the last variable that we're going to be working with a lot in gas equations is temperature. Um, and we've been mostly using temperature in Celsius this year. It's the standard unit for science. Um, and we're really going to try and confuse you a little bit right here because we're going to start using the Kelvin. And we've talked about the unit Kelvin the back at the beginning of the year when we talked about absolute zero. Um, but we haven't really practiced a lot with converting between Kelvin and Celsius. Okay, so when we do gas equations, all of our temperature values need to be in kelvins, all right? It's actually a super easy conversion um, compared to some of the, like, the tough stuff you guys have been doing this year. Like Celsius to Fahrenheit? Yes, not, not an good. easy conversion. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. Nope. Okay, so we're gonna, sometimes you'll be given Celsius and you'll have to convert that into Kelvin to, do, to use it into, uh, to use it in the gas problem. All right, and to do that, um, to get your degrees Celsius, you're gonna take whatever you were given in kelvins and you're gonna subtract 273. Or, or to get your temperature in Kelvin, you're going to take your Celsius and you're going to add 273. All right, so for example, let's say you were given a problem that says convert 100 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. We, we know that we have to use Kelvins in our gas loss problems. Okay, this is actually a pretty straightforward thing to do. Okay, so we take our 100 degrees Celsius, we just add 273 to it, and it gives us 373 Kelvin. Super simple. All right, but maybe the, the problem asks you at the end to give your answer in degrees Celsius. All right, again, super, super easy, okay? So all you have to do is take your 393 Kelvin that you have your, from your answer in the problem, subtract 273, and it gives you 120 degrees Celsius. All right, so to get go from uh, Celsius to Kelvin, we add 273. To go from Kelvin to Celsius, we subtract 273. All right, I always kind of remember it because my Kelvin value is always going to be bigger than my Celsius value, and right? that just helps me to remember it. All right, so that's it. Uh, you should have written down in your notebook everything that was underlined. Um, if you need to go back, you can do that. Uh, make sure you get all the notes in your notebook. So any questions that you have, things that you would raise your hand and ask in class, or maybe like whisper to a neighbor to see what's really going on, write down those questions in your notebook because you will have an opportunity tomorrow to get them answered. Um, and write a two to three sentence summary of what you learned in this PowerPoint so you can get like the, the big picture look. So what was the point of what we taught you today in this video? So do those two things, a couple of questions, and then uh, two to three sentences of what you learned, and you will be ready for class tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.